equals have you ever considered that the iconic hump on the back of China's strategic nuclear submarines, the turtle back that military enthusiasts both love and hate, might soon become a thing of the past? Recently, a seemingly routine tender notice issued by Bohai Shipbuilding Industry Co. Limited, a subsidiary of China State Shipbuilding Corporation, sparked intense debate within both domestic and international military circles. The core requirement of the notice was the procurement of two sets of 14-meter assembly platforms for circular sections. The engineering implications behind this brief statement are staggering. The key figure of 14 meters almost explicitly indicates that the platform is intended for use with unprecedentedly large diameter pressure hull sections of a submarine. Numerous seasoned military enthusiasts and defense experts keenly recognized this as a strong signal that a critical bottleneck in China's strategic nuclear submarine technology tree is on the verge of being overcome. The long-standing humpback issue plaguing China's big black fish has finally glimpsed the dawn of a cure. The so-called humpback refers to a compromise design necessitated by the need to accommodate ultra-long submarine-launched intercontinental ballistic missiles. When the diameter of the pressure hull is insufficient to fully encase the missile launch tube, designers have no choice but to install a non-pressure resistant fairing structure on top of the pressure hull. This protruding section is aptly referred to as the turtle back. However, the turtle back is far from merely an aesthetic issue. Its tactical costs are extremely severe. It brutally disrupts the submarine's original streamlined hydrodynamic shape, causing a sharp increase in navigation resistance and a decrease in speed. More critically, it acts as a massive noise amplifier during underwater navigation. Water flow impacts and turbulent vortices erupt violently at this point, generating radiation noise far exceeding that of other parts of the hull. Many mistakenly believe that strategic nuclear submarines primarily cruise at low speeds, so noise issues are not significant. This is a misconception. Nuclear submarines typically cruise at 15 to 16 knots during combat readiness patrols and rapid transit missions. At this speed range, even a meticulously designed hump still generates significant hydrodynamic noise, akin to striking an invisible drum in the dark depths of the ocean, severely threatening the submarine's stealth and survivability. As leading nations in nuclear submarine technology, the United States and Russia have taken different approaches to addressing the hump issue. The United States leverages its cutting-edge missile miniaturization technology to cleverly arrange the warhead of the Trident IID-5 missile around the final stage engine thereby maintaining its powerful destructive capability while effectively reducing the missile's length. Russia, however, has opted for a more direct approach, shortening the missile. The length of the Bulava missile was significantly reduced from 14.7 meters in the previous generation Kinsel to 12.7 meters, enabling the Borea class to successfully eliminate the humpback issue. However, this reduction came at a significant cost, the missile's range plummeted from approximately 11,000 kilometers in the Kinsel to around 8,000 kilometers, severely reducing its strategic deterrence radius. For China, the path of emulating Russia's approach to shortening missiles is virtually blocked. China's strategic nuclear submarines are primarily deployed in the South China Sea. To effectively cover core targets on the U.S. West Coast, missile range must exceed 11,000 kilometers. To deter critical regions in the U.S. Southeast, such as Florida, the range requirement soars to an astonishing 15,000 kilometers. Such stringent range requirements mean that the length of submarine-launched missiles cannot be significantly reduced. Therefore, mastering the manufacturing technology for large diameter pressure hulls has become the only realistic and feasible breakthrough for China's nuclear submarines to abandon the turtle shell design. However, expanding the pressure hull diameter to the 14-meter level is far from as simple as merely scaling up the materials. This is a systematic cutting-edge engineering project spanning material science, extreme manufacturing, and precision welding, facing at least three insurmountable technical barriers. First is the challenge of precision in constructing massive structures. Manufacturing a 14-meter diameter colossus requires ultra-large, ultra-high precision rolling equipment. The processing precision, rigidity, and strength of the rolling machine directly determine the final geometric precision, dimensional tolerances, and residual stress distribution of the giant hull sections. Even the slightest deviation could potentially pose fatal risks to structural integrity and maximum diving depth in future deep-sea high-pressure environments. The 14-meter class assembly and rounding platform being tendered by Bois High Shipyard is the key infrastructure to address this core challenge, serving as the foundation for achieving high-precision manufacturing 
and assembly of giant hull sections. Next is the challenge of deep sea pressure. The yield strength of special steel is the fundamental guarantee for submarines to withstand the terrifying hydrostatic pressure of the deep sea. The larger the hull diameter, the greater the total pressure load it must bear at the same depth, increasing exponentially. To manufacture a 14-meter class pressure-resistant hull, it is necessary to use special alloy steel with yield strength, far exceeding that of existing submarine steel. This material must not only possess extremely high strength, but also excellent toughness, weldability, and fatigue resistance. Its development and large-scale stable production are major national challenges in themselves. Finally, there is the challenge of the steel kiss. Welding is the lifeline of pressure hull construction for submarines. The special high-strength steel used for large diameter pressure hulls has extremely high welding sensitivity to achieve the required strength standards, and the heat-affected zone is highly prone to defects such as cold cracks. This requires welding materials to have perfect metallurgical compatibility, and welding processes must achieve near-perfect stability and precision control. Any minor defect in the weld or heat-affected zone can be magnified under deep sea high pressure conditions, potentially leading to catastrophic structural failure. Eliminating the turtle back is undoubtedly a milestone leap forward in China's strategic nuclear submarine technology. However, this is merely a crucial step toward creating a true deep sea ghost. To truly integrate nuclear submarines into the tranquility of the ocean, a comprehensive suite of cutting edge technologies must be developed and breakthroughs achieved in tandem. A natural circulation reactor provides the powerful propulsion required for silent cruising while significantly reducing main equipment noise. Advanced vibration isolation modules form a multi-level isolation system to maximize the prevention of mechanical vibration energy transmission to the hull. Active noise cancellation technology uses precision sensors to detect noise and generates phase-opposed sound waves in real time to precisely cancel it out. The revolutionary pumpjet propulsion system significantly reduces cavitation noise and blade vibration noise generated by the propulsion system representing the pinnacle of current underwater propulsion system noise reduction technology. Only when these technologies work together can the black fish of the deep sea truly disappear into the shadows. Even more promising is that the next generation of domestically produced nuclear submarines is highly likely to adopt modular construction technology, which represents the cutting edge of shipbuilding. This technology completely overturns the traditional serial construction model of building the hull first and then installing equipment, instead dividing the submarine into multiple functionally complete super modules. These modules are then assembled in parallel in an open workshop, where internal equipment installation, pipeline laying, and independent testing are completed. Finally, like assembling a giant Lego set, the modules are precisely aligned and joined together. The U.S. Ohio-class submarines adopted this technology over 40 years ago, achieving a qualitative leap in construction efficiency and quality control. Once China masters and applies this technology, it will mean a significant reduction in the construction cycle of new strategic nuclear submarines, with production capacity poised for a historic surge. When the streamlined back of China's strategic nuclear submarines finally smooths out the prominent turtle back, its significance goes far beyond mere aesthetic improvement. It is a silent declaration that China has achieved breakthroughs in areas critical to the core competitiveness of major national projects, including ultra-high-strength special steel smelting extreme precision manufacturing, advanced welding techniques, nuclear propulsion silent technology, and advanced hydrodynamic design. This will not only significantly enhance the submarine's underwater stealth, speed, and survivability but also mean its operational patrol range will be expanded to an unprecedented extent, truly enabling it to conduct strategic patrols in the depths of the global oceans. The disappearance of the turtleback will mark a pivotal milestone in the maturation of China's underwater nuclear deterrent capabilities and its march toward the deep blue. This big black fish about to dive into the depths of the ocean no longer bears the shackles of technology but the weighty responsibility of safeguarding vast maritime borders and defending peaceful development. When it silently glides into the deep sea, the strategic security foundation of a nation will become more solid than ever before, without a sound.